friends, Gita Rose here. Thank you for tuning in. So today's video is about entering the vocal channeling state. I do think that everyone has the ability to do this. I do think that it can be something that can be taught. But I do also feel that people have different agreements and that individuals may not have a specific vocal channeling agreement with a specific entity. However, if that is something that really excites you, you can choose to make that agreement in this now. A big part of what our consciousness is realizing and shifting throughout this entirety of our integration is our ability to change and re-choose our blueprint themes. So I've had a lot of people ask questions about learning to channel, about getting into the channeling state, and people offering reflections about maybe having their own experiences with vocal channeling, experiences of being in this state spontaneously, but perhaps learning how to hold it or learning to be able to even bring words through at all. So I'm going to uh, take you through my process of entering into how I get into the channeling state and explaining to the best of my ability kind of while I'm in between states what I'm experiencing as the channel and different lessons that I was taken through when I was beginning to learn to do this because it happened to me spontaneously as well. I've been totally candid about the use of the cannabis. Um, I now know that I function much better when I'm clean and clear and sober. It actually doesn't work so well when I am under the influence of anything. Um, but that was the agreement, that was the activation, and then I followed excitement. And honestly, at times, in the early days, it was like I didn't have a choice. We always have a choice, but I would feel this wave come over me, like, okay, we're like, knock, knock, <laughs> we're ready. Um, and so I would choose to sit down and be taken through these different meditations and these different lessons in a way. So I've never done anything like this. I know that the files are stored in my mind and this may be a series, this may be the first video that I make about this topic and I can tap into more information that I know that I know to be able to share with everyone. So we shall see exactly what happens in this video, but I will, to the best of my ability, kind of break it down step by step. And to also, before I shift gears a little bit and go in, if at any point during this, if you're watching this video and you are following along with me and you decide to go into the vocal channeling state to see what happens at any point, if you get an idea, an inspiration to write something down or to get up and dance or to start singing or to play music or to, to paint a pin, you know, any other form of channeling that comes to you, follow that. A big, big part of us really falling into the flow is releasing any insistence that it needs to go any certain way. I know that you guys know this, but I just really wanna state that because it's really fun when we can be surprised on how information can come through. So remember that as you're being taken through this, if you get, a vision or an idea of you painting a picture, turn the video off and go and do that. Listen to yourself. Um, so a really good <clears throat> game that maybe I'll do with myself in a different video, um, Daryl Anka, the channel of Bashar, has talked about doing this before, is set up two chairs for yourself and have one chair be the questioner and one chair be the entity's chair and actually physically shift chairs. Think of a question that you have, ask the air the question, and then move into the chair, and then now you facilitate the movement of the air and answer the question. So maybe do a different video for that, but I think what I'm gonna go into first um, 
may be a bit more applicable to help you get into the state of potentially being able to even form words to answer this question. Um, always know too, it's really like a psychic kindergarten play, right? Being able to really trust our imagination is a skill that we need to learn, but in actuality, the skill is to really let go and to trust any image, any feeling, any sense, any smell, any anything that comes through us. Um, and that is a skill that gets learned to be able to truly relax and have fun and to trust any image or any idea that is coming through you. And yes, once you have gotten to the point where maybe words are coming through or even not, Again, there's no rules with this at all. Having another person, another physical person ask you questions is really, really helpful because it allows you to fully get out of the way and the other person can really ground the energy to talk to the entity, whether it's a completely separate entity or you wish to bring your higher self through, whatever the idea is. So let's start with using your imagination. Can you already think of a being, an archetype, a race that you wish to connect to? Or is it just your higher self? Is it a slightly future version of you? Is it a parallel version of you that maybe then again is from another race or another time frame completely? So just take a moment and see what comes to you. So we know that I'm connected to Bella. I do also channel Cybo from time to time. I'm learning to be able to facilitate that. Um, but today for this purpose of being able to communicate what I'm doing while kind of half in the state, I will bring in, connect with Bella. So the way that I start, again, totally subjective, totally up to you as to how you want to sit. Do you want to stand? Do you maybe even want to try lying down? I do find though that sitting in a upright position with my legs at a 90 degree angle, my feet firmly on the ground, you can't see that with this angle, but I also have bare feet. Um, that's usually how I choose to do it. Bare feet on the ground really helps me ground and really helps me to open up the circuits of the channel. Um, Bella and the entire energy of the hybrid races and my higher self really utilizes the body, really gets into the internal energetic body and having things open is really helpful. So even just like do some stretches, do your little hokey pokey, but I do make sure that I actually, um, I practice yoga and so I will usually practice before I go into the altered state, but yeah, just get a little, get a little weird, make some noises, okay. Um, also too, um, when it was first coming through for me, I was very aware that I was kind of mimicking Daryl Enka and Bashar. Their energy is so almost kind of stereotypical to many of us at this time. The accent is, is easy in a way to impersonate. And I would do that, I would allow myself to do that as a permission slip to help me sink into their energy. So that can be a fun permission slip too. And again, maybe I'll do a different video on that, throw on a Hawaiian shirt and kind of play around and do my impersonation of Bashar, which is in its own way, helping us activate and open up these passageways and relax enough to have fun enough to build the skill of trusting the imagination. I think this makes sense what I'm saying. But today I'm just gonna go through step by step from my process, like I've been saying. So again, nice firm feet on the ground, seated position. For me, the first action on my part starts 
with the conscious choice, the conscious intention to connect with her specifically, but for you, whatever that may be. So I start with the choice and that, as you see, usually brings my eyes to a close. And at that point too, over the years, I have learned to release the energy in my hands and give a nice big exhale. And at this point too, I'm usually very aware that certain parts of me will wanna shake out, will wanna move side to side. And then here, there's another choice. There is another moment of relaxing into, making the choice of the connection. And the breath here, I'll start to explain the breath, is a very specific breath, similar to a yogic breath. Really deep in the belly. And then moving to fully expand the lungs. And the breath spins in the back of the throat. allowing any little ticks, little movements. I'm usually very aware that my left foot will shift a little bit. It's very, I'm very aware that I'm bringing in energy through my feet, but the left foot in particular. And to be aware of what your body is doing, to be aware of these little movements or ticks and to fall deeper and deeper into the choice that you are very consciously making to have the intention of this very specific type of connection. Taking as much time <clears throat> again, little ticks like that the clearing of the throat will happen. And tuning into maybe you already feel whatever you imagined, whatever you were hoping, knowing that eventually you would like to connect to. Setting that intention to connect to. Maybe you already feel that energy around you. I know I do. Again, my agreement is slightly different. Already you may even be able to hear it in my voice. But I spent a lot of time in this state, in this first state of finding the level of relaxation and just sticking with this breath. getting yourself very relaxed. Maybe you begin to notice that different things are adjusting. I know when I enter into this very deep breathing state, I begin to feel different things popping in my spine, things getting aligned. That's essentially what we're doing here is getting very aligned. Now, from this state, this very relaxed, very receptive state, where I'm not only aware of Bella's energy from here, but I'm aware of my higher self energy. I'm aware of different guides that I might have. This is a state that I relate to a clairvoyant reading space. It is 
in its own way a trans state, but I am definitely more so in my personality's perspective. And this is the state where I am able to do intuitive readings from. And this is a really good state to begin to practice opening what we call the third eye. Now from my perspective, the third eye is only able to open once the heart is very open. Getting very grounded in the body, again really feeling the body on the chair, feeling your feet on the floor, getting really relaxed, allowing these different movements to happen, and opening the heart, sinking into the heart, asking the one heart to show any picture, any feeling, any idea that may be relevant for you or another individual. In my perspective, once the heart is open and once we are grounded and sitting in that heart space, that is then what actually opens the third eye and can allow more specific pictures to come through. Once again, it's very much about the practice of it, about the doing of it. Trusting the pictures that you're being shown, if you are being shown pictures at all. If you're not being shown any pictures, focus on the black itself on your eyes. For me, once again, I think I came into this world having a slightly different agreement. And so anytime that I shut my eyes, I would see very, very bright colors. Almost like when you squint your eyes really hard and you start to see all those little dots and things. I see that just when I close my eyes. Again, because I think I came in with a slightly stronger agreement. But in this space, finding your ultimate vibration of peace, of connection, you can turn your gaze to the backs of your eyes and watch the black and begin to possibly see different colors come up, different sensations, different smells, different knowings. Again, it can be really fun to practice giving intuitive readings from this space with another person. Because it's easier for the energy to ground and for you as the reader to have something to focus on at all. I'm being shown in this moment that a fun activity or permission slip can actually be to focus on, if you don't have another individual that you are excited to practice this with, to focus on a plant. I'm being shown a plant, having a physical plant in your reality and closing your eyes and seeing the energy, the auric body of the plant, to give a plant a reading, to begin to activate and open up the ability essentially to imagine and receive pictures. So this is the beginning state for me, again, of being in this place of receptivity. But this is not the state where I do the channelings from. But I'm very aware when I have reached the state of being at the level where I would do an intuitive reading from. I take a moment to honor my awareness of being relaxed enough to know that I am in the first level, you might say, of an altered state. From there, again, there's very much a choice 
an awareness of my intention to connect to another entity, whether it be a completely differentiated being or an aspect of my higher self. And from there, I make the choice. Once again, <clears throat> because of my specific agreement, I feel what I can only describe as a lock come in and I start to feel different sensations in my body. There is a tickling sensation that happens on the back of the neck. In this moment, it changes from time to time. I'm really slowing it down in this now. But a big part of the lessons that I was taken through in the early years was being very aware of any minute little changes or sensations around my body. So feeling a little tickle on the back of my neck in this now. I can feel my heart space being opened. I feel chills around my shoulders. There was a crack in my neck, an alignment in my neck. I spent a lot of time in this stage when I was first learning, just feeling the presence of another energy with me. This was before Bella had a name. This was before I knew where exactly she was from, but I knew there was another entity that was excited and willing to have this type of communication with me and that it was first my choice to enter into the state and then my choice to continue choosing and continue choosing and continue choosing in each and every moment and then having the awareness of subtle, subtle things happening in my body. This helps us ground and have external confirmation that something else is going on, that we are connecting to something else. Now, when I first first started, again, I was allowing myself to mimic Daryl Anka, <clears throat> and so I would, I, I would very purposely put my hands in this position because I'd seen him do it, it looked like fun, it looked like maybe it helps ground, and this is what I have come to learn that it does indeed keep the circuit moving. It keeps the energy flow. It keeps also creates a, a frame for us that's very sturdy in a way. Don't really push though, you know? And if your hands wanna do something different, if you don't like doing this, if you don't like how this feels, you don't have to do this, of course. There's many different ways, but candidly, and honestly, when I first, first started, I put myself in this position because it seemed like fun. And I knew that I was very consciously mimicking what I had seen Daryl and Bashar do. But now I don't go into that right away. I stay here. And I wait for, again, what I can only describe as a lock. There's a series of locks that I'll explain as we go along. And I wait for these different sensations, these different feelings. And I, my eyes are focused on the blackness. And then different colors begin to come in. But I know what I'm looking for, what I'm waiting for, is essentially like a white dot, a white 
pinpoint that comes into focus and feels like a lock on my third eye and a lock on my heart. And essentially that's what I am waiting for. You may or may not have this experience, but allow yourself to be in this state of maybe being aware that there's something else floating around you, whether it be your higher self or another entity. Allow anything to come through that needs to come through. As silly or as weird as you feel. Now I have seen the lock. I feel the lock today, it actually represented itself looking more so like an eyeball that I see. It may also be the reflection of the ring light that I'm using for the video, but I'm used to this sensation and this is something that my ego in a way is looking for. I feel it in my body and I feel, okay, we've reached a certain level. We can now go to the next step. And what that means for me is relax, 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 relax. Now, a few years ago after Bella became Bella and I knew what the entity more so was, something began to happen where my hand positions would shift on their own. And I was given forewarning in a way that the hands need to move. The body is going to move and there is a moment in between this where it's not it's not exactly happening to me. There is sl the slight sensation of the being needing me to be in a different place. But always there is the conscious awareness of another choice. I'm choosing again in this moment to have this interaction. I am reemphasizing again my intention to connect in this way to a differentiated being or an aspect of my higher self. Once I have found this lock, once I've been shown we're at the next level, I'm then told the hands are going to move. And I take the moment to make the choice to relax even deeper and to know where we are going and to assist, you might say, in this. So the hands then will move to my left palm facing up and my right palm facing down. I'm very consciously aware that I'm grounding even more. I'm pulling energy in from above and sending energy down to the below, creating a circle of energy. My attention then gets drawn to my feet and I'm aware I'm holding tension in my hips. And I release that, things pop in my neck and I'm even further aligned. Another pop in my neck and I allow all of this to happen. I move out of the way as much as I am able. Making a choice and a choice and a choice and another choice to continue to continue in my moment of excitement. I'm aware that the arms need to want to come out a bit more. I'm aware that my torso moves and things are becoming more aligned. As we move closer to the state. I'm aware of my thumb twitching of my left foot twitching. Just creating space. Settling into the openness, feeling any chills, sensations. <clears throat> I 
the clicking of the teeth only started about eight months ago for me once I really started doing this publicly. But again, if it's something that feels fun for you to try to mimic, to see how it feels in your body, play with it. Or any other type of movement in the mouth. Allowing any movement to happen in the hands. So at this point, I'm very consciously not going into the toning. I know that I'm basically there. When I'm not going into the toning, which for me truly solidifies the connection with Bella and brings her fully in, so that I may describe the next level that I've spent a very long time in before words truly came out. So I'm actually gonna dial myself back a bit so I can communicate a little bit more as myself. And I will bring my hands in this position because it's quite grounding for me. But once I was very aware that different things were happening in my body, different sensations, different poppings, different openings. And once again, this was coming from what I think to be Bella's energy, having a very specific agreement with me, but also really allowing myself to, again, mimic different channelers that I had seen before and to slip into the role of being a vocal channel, to allow myself to truly play and make believe a bit what I think it means, what I think it looks like, what I think it's quote unquote supposed to look like to be a channel. And the more that I played with this, the more that I really felt the differentiated being and the more that different sensations happened in my body that I knew I wasn't make-believing. So I spent a lot of time in the stage that I just came out of before the initial lock really comes in. My process was slowed down in a way. I never even got to the point for quite a few months where I felt that sensation of that lock really happening and the introduction coming through. Once again, there's always a really big, that's the biggest moment of choice for me, is that final <laughs> kickback before she fully enters. There is a huge moment of, I am doing this, I agree, I am in my excitement, I choose, I choose, I choose. But I spent a lot of time, as I said, in a state to me that feels slightly before that state of really being aware and noticing different movements, different sensations in my body. And then at times too, in the early days, I just allow myself to relax, relax, and allow myself to bring the hands down. and still feel the energies around me, feel that there were different aspects of myself, of the higher self, parallel versions of myself. Again, when I started, I didn't know exactly what the entity was. Maybe you have connected to what feels like the initial intention that you set out to connect with in this video. Maybe something else has stepped forward. But I spent a lot of time here, 
this is the stage that I would recommend for people that have become aware to some degree of their ability to vocal channel. To get really comfortable in this state of not needing to make sounds and almost consciously not going fully in, almost staying just before the final lock happens and to truly allow yourself to get really relaxed, able to hold the energy. Feeling your emotional vibrations shifting. That was a big lesson that I was taken through is feeling the different aspects of myself. Primarily, the main one that I worked with was the feeling of doubt. Really, really feeling doubt in the body, looking at it, knowing how it feels in my body, loving the energy, showing it love, I spent a lot of time just sitting in silence, feeling the doubt that I didn't know exactly what was going on, that I didn't know exactly what was real. Quote unquote, we define what is real and our imagination is real. But allowing myself to fully sit in that feeling of not knowing. Not knowing if, am I actually connecting to anything? Is this me? Is this another being? Am I making this up? Whatever. Not knowing. Sitting in the knowing of not knowing. And feeling once again any movements, any adjustments in the body. And continuing that very deep breath and rolling it in the back of the throat. Really allowing yourself to feel that you don't know in this moment and really feel that you are in your excitement of exploring. You are in your excitement of taking action on your intention. And you are in the moment of knowing you are making a choice. And then from there, I was given a really big lesson that the experience of not knowing, the experience of having the awareness that you don't know is actually something that you know. Knowing that you don't know is something that you know. So I spent a long time sitting with that understanding, sitting in the fact of knowing that I don't know and that that in fact is something that I know. And this got me very comfortable with being in the vibration of the unknown. Allowed me to feel very safe in a paradoxical way, knowing that I don't know and knowing that that is something that I do know and that there is safety in this, there is grounding in this, there is connection in this. So I spent a long time in this state and this is when different sounds and words then more organically began to come through. <sighs> oh. Oui. 
send our love. Hey, on do eat in eat on far on take hard on. Eh, oh, eat, eat, do, 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 beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. Feeling really silly. Feeling playful. Feeling weird. Having fun. Again, knowing that you don't know and knowing that that is something that you know. Staying with the sensations, moving in the body. We're always aligning, always adjusting. And staying in the sensation of, once again, being very aware that you are making a choice, being very aware you are in the action of your excitement, and then knowing that you don't know. And knowing that that is something that you know. And you are agreeing to be taken on a ride, to put yourself in the passenger seat. You are excited about this. And more and more you will begin to feel perhaps the presence of a fully different entity, different words, phrases, light language, sounds, songs, whatever have you can come through. The state of knowing that you don't know and knowing that that is something that you know is again a really good state for individuals to stay in who may have found that they have a connection but are learning to ground it. And at any point, if you're like, that's too much, I'm kind of over it, then get out. <laughs> and then you can move, I know for me, oh, my remote shutter, I know for me, I'm aware that my hips will begin to lock up, move around, or again, if anything came to you during this exercise to paint a picture or to sing a song or to run around if the energy is just so much that you can only hold 15 seconds of being in that state of knowing you're connecting to something else and being in the awareness of knowing that you don't know, then awesome. Um, so yeah, I think I will leave this here for you all today. And again, I think this may be something that I do again and we'll get deeper reflections from Bella and remember different exercises that I was taken through in my early days of this. And yeah, maybe put on the Hawaiian shirt and do my impersonation of Bashar um, because I, I did do that in, in the early days and it was fun for me. So I feel like this is, I have actually no concept of time. I don't know how long this video was at all, but I'm sure it is perfect and exactly what it needs to be. And thank you all for tuning in I send my love to you. Our minds may be different. Our bodies may be different. But it is through our hearts that we know we are one.